apparently they're out fishing. You know, it did rain, you know. And uh, on the side of the road, somewhere here outside in Vegas, and, and being Christians and all, and apparently listening to this uh, ongoing study in Bible prophecy, they decided to make this sign uh, that said this, The end is near. Turn yourself around now before it's too late. And they showed this sign to each passing car. Well, one of the drivers that drove by Alan Kinney, they, he didn't appreciate that sign at all. And he shouted back, leave us alone, you religious nuts. And he kept on driving. Well, then all of a sudden there was this big, huge, massive splash. And Al looks over at Kinney and says, do you think we should have just put up a sign that says, the bridge is out? <laughs> what do you do with those guys? What, Jim, what do you... Obviously, we need to keep praying for those guys, but I don't know about you, but I'm so glad they didn't wear their Sunrise Baptist t-shirts on that day. <laughs> I'll tell you what. But, anyway, but seriously, folks, the, the obvious thing that's going on there, other than we need to keep praying for Alan Kinney, uh, is that guy learned the hard way that you really do need to pay attention to signs that's pointing that there's danger ahead, right? Well, unfortunately, folks, the bad news is uh, the Bible says one day the whole planet is going to be doing the same thing with God's warning signs when he says there are bad days ahead, okay? And the Bible is clear, folks. They can sit here and mock us and scoff us and God and the message and call us religious nuts too. But the problem is the Bible says, man, you are running the risk of being left behind and thrust into the Antichrist kingdom and that is a place you don't want to be. And of course, that all begins at the rapture of the church. And folks, we've been seeing, folks, this the, the reason why it's such a horrible time is because Jesus said so, okay? He not only said he is the way, the truth, the life. Nobody comes to the Father except through him. That's great. But he also said you don't want to be in the seven-year tribulation. It's going to be the worst time in the history of mankind. So bad that unless God shortened the time frame, the entire human race would be literally wiped out and destroyed destroyed okay but praise God as we've been seeing God's not just a God of wrath which again I will say it again because people misunderstand this character of God God's wrath is not a bad thing what that is it means that is his uh, putting uh, down all the evil the baloney the suffering the injustice the unrighteousness he's putting a stop to it that's good news right okay but he's also a God of love as well and I'm firm, I firmly believe this guys did, did you realize that God did not have to give us any kind of warning signs did you realize that God didn't have to give us one prophecy concerning the second coming of Jesus Christ what, what that is is a heads up it's a, a loving action from God to give us a heads up so we would know and be prepared for the last days, so we wouldn't miss this golden opportunity, okay? It's a sign from God that he is coming back to get his church, Jesus Christ, and the seven-year tribulation uh, is near. And if you're not saved, you need to get saved. And that's the whole point, as we've been seeing in our study. And so in order to keep you and I here at Sunrise from experiencing that ultimate bad day of being left behind, hello, uh, even worse than fishing with Alan Kinney, apparently, uh, we're going to continue, that's right, in our study called The Final Countdown. The final countdown. Now we've already seen folks that the prophet John right here over there, uh, for those of you looking at him, uh, he's already shared with his folks that the number 10 sign is the Jewish people. The number 9 sign is modern technology. That's right, John. I didn't get the effect I wanted to last week. They were a little bit too small. You got to crank it up a little bit. But he's watching you, so pay attention. The prophet Al sees all. Uh, but anyway, that's right. The number 8 sign was worldwide upheaval. Number 7, the rise of falsehood. Number 6, the rise of wickedness. Number 5, the rise of apostasy. 4, the rise of a one world religion. Number 3, the rise of a one world government in the last five times who's counting yes that's right Jordan I am uh, is the sign of a one world economy okay and what we saw is God lovingly foretold you and I he didn't have to he did when you are in that generation when you actually can you imagine this uh, when all the world's economies on the planet coming together as one yeah, it's happening right now as we've been seeing. And we saw that with the uh, chronological proof, the fear manipulation proof, the quotation proof, uh, the union proof, the American proof, the currency proof, and the last two times the technology proof. And folks, what we've been seeing is, listen, we don't just have a one world economy. We don't have just a one world currency, i.e. we're all literally whole countries are converting to a cashless society. But for the first time in man's history, in our generation, we have the technology to pull all that together into a mark of the beast system that the Bible says is going to happen in the last days. It's called RFID or radio frequency identification. And listen, it's being promoted in all sectors of society right now as a microchip uh, tracking product for every product, every pet, every person, everything to be tracked and monitored wherever you go on the planet and of course guess what the same technology has the ability to make financial transactions to buy and sell isn't that nifty okay and this is the point folks this is not 50 years down the road this is being implemented right now as we sit here in this study right now okay it's being implemented and folks the bible is clear once we accept this stuff in full force this rfid stuff we are literally as a planet we are headed for a bloodbath i didn't see that god did let's open your bibles to revelation 19 
is our opening text. Revelation 19. We're going to take a look at verses 11 through 21. Great chapter, by the way. Revelation 19, as you turn there, is all about the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Anybody excited about that? Oh, man, it's going to be awesome. Now, here's the neat thing. I think sometimes as Christians, we don't realize we're coming back with them. Okay? <laughs> we're raptured before the seven-year tribulation. We get to come back with them, and he actually mentions that. How many guys like horseback riding? How many guys don't like horseback riding? Well, don't worry. That's right. Apparently, uh, we will uh, at this time. Uh, we'll all be covered because this is going to be a joyful time. It's going to be great. This is awesome, man. This is what we should be looking forward to. This is why the Bible says reading the book of Revelation is a triple blessing for those who read, who hear, who take to heart. Man, we win. This is the winning time. This is it. This is at the end of the seven-year tribulation. We come back with Jesus Christ. He squelches the battle of Armageddon, and it's awesome. Guys, what we're about to read, this is our future. That God is telling us in advance, we get to be in this victory parade, a part of the army of hosts of Jesus Christ, the King of the universe. This is what is coming. Let's take a look at that. Verse 11 is where he starts talking about that. Now before that, it, oh, I don't even have time to get into that. The first 10 verses, they're going, hallelujah, hallelujah. They just can't stop shouting. They're excited. And we should be too about this passage. Let's take a look. In verse 11, here's, here's what he says there. He says, And I saw heaven, John said, standing open, and there before me was a white horse uh, whose, whose rider is called Faithful and True. This is Jesus, folks. Now, with justice, he, what? He judges and makes war. You need to understand, folks, that Jesus, when he comes back, is totally different than his first coming. The first coming, yes, praise God, he was the lamb who was slain before the creation of the world. He was the lamb who was bruised and beaten and murdered on our behalf. But when he comes back, he's coming back as the lion of the tribe of Judah, and he's the one who's going to be dishing out the beatings. We forget that. We serve a risen Savior who's at the right hand of the Father. Okay, he is the King of kings and Lord of lords. So he's coming back to make war, folks, and you don't want to pick a fight with Jesus. Listen, his eyes are like blazing fire, and on his head are many crowns. He's got a name written on him that no one knows but uh, he himself, and he's dressed in a robe dipped in blood, and uh, his name is the Word of God. The armies of heaven, that's us, folks, were following him, riding on what? Woohoo, white horses. And, and, and dressed in fine linen, white and clean. Now listen, out of his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. And he's going to rule them with an iron scepter. He, he treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. And on his robe and on his thigh, he's got this name written. Listen, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun who cried in a loud voice to all the birds flying in midair, Come, gather together for the great supper of God, so that you may listen to this this so that you may eat the flesh of kings and generals and mighty men of horses and the riders and the flesh of all people free and slaves small and great whoa and then he says this then I saw the beast the antichrist okay and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against the rider on the horse and his army what you're really gonna pick a fight you're gonna try to take on God how many of you guys are gonna say this you don't want to do that yeah, listen what happens. It's pretty obvious. The, the, the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet who had performed the miraculous signs on his behalf. And with these signs he had what? He had deluded those who had received the mark of the beast and worshipped his image. The two of them were thrown alive into the fiery lake of burning sulfur, and the rest of them were killed with the sword that came out of the mouth of the rider of the horse, that's Jesus, and all the birds gorged on their flesh. Whoa. I don't even think the Lord of the Rings, the Hobbit, can depict that scene. <laughs> but here's the deal. That's a make-believe movie. This is reality. This is coming to the planet, folks. And folks, I think it's pretty obvious, other than dealing with yet another intense passage uh, this week. How many guys would say that, man, apparently the last mistake you'd ever want to make, number one, is finding yourself into the seven-year tribulation period, which only happens when you, unfortunately, reject Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and, and don't get saved right now. You're putting yourself in that risk position. But apparently the second last mistake you'd ever want to make uh, is to join the two biggest losers of all time. Huh? That's what these guys are. They're the biggest losers of all time, okay? And that's the Antichrist and the false prophet. And apparently the last thing you'd ever want to do if you find yourself unfortunately the seven-year tribulation is to let them delude you. It says it right there. To delude you into taking this mark of the beast, Right? I mean, it's pretty obvious. I mean, whatever you do, don't do that. You can get a lot of things wrong, but don't do that. It is going to go from bad to worse. And I think it's pretty obvious when you take a look at that text. To me, words like blazing fire. 
uh, treading out the winepress of the fury of God's wrath, iron scepter, uh, thrown alive into a fiery lake of burning sulfur, birds gorging on their flesh all over the planet. That sounds like a pretty bad time to me. How about you? Yeah, you don't want to do that. And then folks, once again, here's the point. Whether people realize they're not this mark of the beast technology that's mentioned right here in this text, right here in this text, is already being leashed on the planet. You got to understand this, folks. The we don't know the exact day nor the hour. But the mark of the beast technology that's mentioned in this text is already being leashed on our planet. It's called RFID. It's not 50 years down the road. It's not something that they're just still got to work out the kinks and the bugs in the factory. It's being leashed on our planet and people right now, especially if they don't understand Bible prophecy. Do you really think it's by chance that the, church, the trend in the church today is to not teach Bible prophecy? And do you really think it's by chance that people don't want to listen to Bible prophecy today? It's not by chance. I have firmly convinced it's spiritual warfare. Why? Because if you don't understand, the Bible is the only book on the planet, guys, that tells us in intimate detail how it's all going down. And so if you're that close to deluding people into taking the mark of the beast, what's the last book you'd ever want them to study? Thank you. I'm telling you, it is not by chance that we see this happening today. And, and, and this is it. The technology's here at the same time. Bible prophecy is going down the tubes. Nobody wants to talk about it. Nobody wants to teach about it today. And guess what? People are being deluded into being prepared to receive this technology. Okay, and I'm telling you first, it's going to go uh, um, uh, uh, as a convenience, it's going to go as a voluntarily, but they're going to switch to mandatory. As we saw last time, if you were here, the first deployment it's already going into our society is the retail industry, okay? But they're not dumb, folks. They're covering all bases, okay? If you think about it, that's not the only place that we buy and sell. It's not just products in the retail industry at the stores, okay? But uh, the second deployment that they're leashing this technology on is, is in the food industry, and especially this one, I really think what's going on here is a power issue, okay? They're not dumb folks. They, they know that we don't just buy products, okay? We buy food, okay? And food just happens to be what we need to sustain everyday life. How many guys can readily agree with that? Yes, it comes in handy. Okay, so once again, guess what? Guess who? That's right, IBM. IBM, you know, the numbering system, people. IBM is out there helping us to be conditioned, to envision our new future, where everything, including our food supply, is being monitored and tracked at all times. Let's take a look at their promotional commercial. Is this the help desk? Yes, it is. We need help. With what? He's no. always no. Is he mad and relentless? I understand. I know. You know, you know, you know, you know, you know Farmer, designer, weaver, buyer, shipper, seller. Yeah, hey, what do you got? You need a customized, integrated, real-time web portal. What? To get you on the same page. Perfect. Huh? Not connected? I mean, I mean, IBM is here to help folks. If you're paying attention to that commercial, uh, they're going to help connect everything on the planet. What did they say? What was the, if you're paying attention, from the farmer to the designer to the weaver to the buyer to the shipper to the seller, right? Everything you buy and sell is all going to be interconnected, including your food supply. And I'm telling you folks, as wild as you might think that goal is, this is what they're planning on doing. Every product, every pet, every piece of food you eat I mean everything, down to the individual vegetable and fruit, I'm not kidding, is going to be tracked and tacked with this RFID technology, is what they're working on. Now they have a term in the industry, it's called from the farm to the fork. Oh, it rhymes, so it's got to be good. From the farm to the fork, it both start with the F. And, and what this vision is, what it encapsulates, if you will, is they're going to track every single piece of food item. All the way from where it begins at the farm, literally all the way to your dinner table at the end of your fork. That's their goal. Okay? And if you were here last time, we saw that's exactly what they're planning on doing. They're not just tracking us with these products and monitoring in our, what we buy and sell in the retail industry. We saw that they're wanting to continue on that tracking. Remember the sniffers in the home? In the driveway, in the doorways? They're wanting to track you all the way even into your home. And this is what they want to do. It includes our food supply, okay? And the reason why is pretty obvious. Back again to what I believe is the power play, the power issue that's going on here. Why food? Okay, because folks, they know that uh, we can live without certain products, but we cannot live without food, right? They know, folks, that we don't have to have that nifty electric can opener that sings the Star Spangled Banner every single time you use it, right? As cool as that is, you don't have to have that, right, Al? Yeah, I know. I'm okay. and, and, and then, it, actually, I actually heard that they invented a toilet seat that when you sat on the thing, 
the music started playing for the Star Spangled Banner. But apparently nobody would buy it because as soon as you sat down in the seat, you had to stand, you know, Ron, you just had to stand back up again. <laughs> it's a Star Spangled Banner, right? Okay. But uh, anyway, bad marketing. Okay. Uh, but but they, they know we don't need that stuff, okay, uh, with that. They, they know, folks, that we don't need, listen, uh, those nifty colored socks that uh, John wears all the time. Really scares me of bowling, but I just try to overlook it. Uh, but that fit in the, in the individual toe. Have you seen those? And the multicolored thing? You know what I'm talking about, Ruth. Yeah, we, we, believe it or not, as cool as those are, we can live without that. And they even know that we can live without that pet rock. How many guys actually bought one when that came out? Maybe for somebody. Because you know that's what Christmas is all about nowadays, is you've got to find something that nobody ever has, or hopefully they invent something that nobody needs to give to somebody who already has everything, and who cares, and yeah, whatever. Uh, but here's the point. They know we can live without certain products, but listen, we can't live without food. We cannot live without food. Food sustains our everyday life. And this is what I believe. Put yourself in the Antichrist shoes, folks. If, if you wanted to force, that's what the text says in Revelation 13, force make. If you wanted to force somebody into doing something they particularly didn't want to do, say like, take a mark of the beast, right? Uh, then control the food supply. In fact, you've got to really micromanage it. You would have to control the food supply down to where every little piece of food that anybody could ever hope to possibly even get anywhere on the planet at any time. And folks, that's not just an ideal. I'm telling you, that's exactly what they mean by this term, farm to the fork. Okay, I'm not making it up, okay? This is their goal. And I believe, folks, it is part of the Antichrist system already being leashed on our planet in the last days. Slowly but surely, the net is closing in, guys, and we better wake up and, and deal with reality. And again, once again, the way that they're trying to get us to go along with this is they're giving us several different justifications as to why you need to let us do this. Because it's for your own good. And the first justification, they say, well, hey, listen, if you let us mark every single food item on the planet, it's going to keep your food fresh. That's right. Don't be a dumb and dumber. It's going to keep your food fresh. And this is actually the rationale they're trying to sell us with this stuff. They say, listen, if, we could, if you would let us do this, and we literally put a microchip on every single piece of food item on the whole planet, man, I mean, don't you guys know your food from now on will always be fresh, always available at all times. And the reason why that they do that, it's not just because they can be tra uh, tagged and then tracked and monitored. Listen, RFID also has the ability, listen, to sniff food. And it can actually tell if food is starting to go bad. Okay? And, and, and this technology, it doesn't just store and receive information and monitor things and as a tracking device, but it literally can sense uh, uh, and sniff chemical smells. You know, in case your food starts to spoil, okay? And, and they say, that's, this is their actual justification, one of them. They say, listen, if we can put this on every single, listen, every single piece of food item on the whole planet, man, this is, <laughs> we're never going to have to deal with rotten fruit again. <laughs> yes, life is so complete now. Okay, interesting. And in fact, then they, they put it, in case you don't fall for that, don't you realize with RFID and the sniffing ability that not only will it keep your food fresh at all times, but listen, it can sniff out other things. In fact, if we do this, we can ensure the safety of our planet from other dangers. Watch this. This is a promotional video. Nearly 30 years ago, the first barcode machine was born. Now, decades later, the technology we usually associate with scanning our groceries is doing everything from stocking shelves to keeping our homeland secure. RFID is a natural evolution to where barcodes were. We're talking about radio frequency identification, or RFID. RFID has been around for a very long time. In fact, today, when you travel through a toll booth and you have an easy pass, that's an RFID technology. Now companies like Symbol are providing RFID technologies to revolutionize the way we live once again, like at the supermarket, creating a 24-hour virtual stock boy or gal. If the shelf was empty and the proximity reader knew that the shelf was empty, it could send a signal to the stocking rotation folks to actually take something from the back room and put it on the shelf. From stocking shelves to taking stock at the airport, where RFID is improving baggage tracking and security. What RFID has done is now taken that technology to the next level. Previously, you would actually have to manually pull a trigger or point a laser or point an image or add a barcode to read it. Now, as it passes within the proximity an RFID reader, that information that would normally be in a barcode is now transmitted. And experts say one of the biggest benefits of the technology is cutting down on human error while improving productivity and lowering operating expenses. 
What else is in the future for RFID? How about something called sensing technology, which can do everything from sniffing out rotten fruits and veggies at the grocery store to sniffing out potential terrorist threats. Sensing technologies would have the ability to sense chemical, radiological, biological weapons in a cargo container. They would also be able to, to sense the freshness of produce in an aisle in retail. Now that's smart technology. Wow. Can you guys imagine that? I mean, this is amazing. We've got to do this. Ron, this is, this is wild. Once again, did you notice the term smart technology? You know, like the smartphone and the smart gun and smart TV and all that other big brother. And once again, it's smart technology, okay? It would not only ensure that our food will never go rotten, but it'll protect us from potential terrorists, Bill. We've got to implement this now. Really? Folks, I don't know about you, but I don't care how much they try to get us to go along with it or justify it. Uh, I truly believe that one, it's a step-by-step -step pr uh, process. Once you go down this route, folks, you are opening up Pandora's box. Okay, now listen. For instance, what if a particular food product was deemed unhealthy for consumption by the government? Oh, wait a second. Earlier in our study, we saw they're already starting to do that. Outlaw, you know, buttered popcorn and salt products and things of that nature and trans fatty food and all that. Yummy stuff. Anyway, but uh, you're right. They're already doing that, okay? But here's the problem, okay? With this new tracking and sniffing ability, if they literally put one of these tags on every single piece of food item on the planet, you have a practical way on a global scale to ensure and monitor what people not just buy and sell, but what they buy and sell and try to eat. Right? This is what it gives them ability. And if you don't think that's ultimately where they're headed with this, folks, listen to this piece. This is a promotional piece from the NCR Corporation, and it's from a, a document entitled 50 Ideas for Revolutionizing the Store Through RFID. And they said this, if food items were tagged with RFID and, and, and could provide ingredients and materials composing the items, shoppers could be warned about items in which they or their family members say were allergic to and when they put the items in the shopping cart. And then the smart system could then suggest alternatives that didn't contain the problematic component and tell the shopper where to go get the correct item. Isn't that nifty? We don't even have to use our brains anymore. Wow. In other words, what they just said, if you put something, listen, wrong in your shopping cart, then you will be told by the smart system, put it back, go get this instead. Thank you. Now, you might be thinking, well, hey, Pastor Billy, that's kind of convenient. You know, being told, because accidents do happen. Being told whether or not a food item is, uh, will, you know, trigger an allergy or, or things of that nature and suggest an alternative. That's not that bad. You know, sometimes we forget. Okay. And, uh, but folks, I'm telling you, the only problem is one day, yeah, maybe it's voluntary now. But what if it became mandatory? And can I tell you something? It's already heading that direction. Listen to what this guy said. He says, imagine what would happen if health insurers public health officials, and even employers, uh, if they could also peer over your shoulder at your food choices and set their own restrictions on what food products you could or could not buy. And they said this, already it's happening. Already police departments have fired officers for smoking cigarettes in their off-duty hours, claiming that smoking raises health insurance costs for others. Employees in King County in Washington, the Seattle area there, uh, will be charged an extra $1,000 in annual health care fees if they don't participate in a Snoopy health incentives program that monitors their lifestyle choices. And he said, well, why wouldn't these same tactics one day be employed at the supermarket? The grocery store cart that watches your spy chip food choices would make it possible for employers and health insurance companies to impose similar conditions on people's grocery store purchases. And why stop at tobacco? Cops could lose their jobs for buying red meat or beer. Giving computers the power to prevent shoppers from buying certain products sounds like a big brother increment just waiting to happen. That's happening right now. And I'd say, yeah, it's also stage one of the Mark of the Beast system that's about ready to happen. What's the technology converging allowing these entities to do? You and I cannot buy or sell. We cannot eat any food item that we buy or sell without some form of authoritative governmental approval. Where have I heard that before? Hey, well, yeah, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, that sounds like the Mark of the Beast system that the Bible predicted 2,000 years ago is going to happen.
It's happening now. The second justification they try to get you and I to get a RFID tags on every single piece of food item on the plan is they say, hey, listen, guys, it's going to keep your food safe. Huh? Who doesn't need safe food? Now, if you were here last week, we did that wonderful audience participation thing. Let's try that once again. Liar, liar, pants on fire. Okay? And, and they know this, folks. They're just throwing this stuff out. They're hoping that something's going to stick. Okay? But then again, it's, it's going to be forced upon you uh, eventually. We'll get to that in a second. But they know that no normal person, give me a break, once you see what's going on here, you're not going to roll over. You're not going to let these companies, you're not going to let government authorities con uh, control and monitor your food supply. That's crazy. I mean, that's nuts. I mean, who let them do that? So once again, folks, they have resorted to that tried and true tactic that works every single time to get us to go along with it. Anyway, it's called fear and manipulation. Fear and manipulation. The phrase we've been seeing for a long time now. You create a crisis, you manage the outcome. Okay? And I believe that's exactly the tactic they're using to get you and I conditioned to surrender to a global monitoring of our total food supply with this RFID stuff. I mean, haven't you guys heard? Well, listen, we don't just have food problems on the planet. We've got food crises. Oh, haven't you heard? It's a serious food crisis. We've got mercury in our fish, right? We've got E. coli in our meat products. We've got uh, chronic wasting disease in deer. We've got that mad cow disease. We've got that avian bird flu thing. It's out of control. Oh! Although I am here for you guys. And I know this might be kind of strange to hear this from me. I've got to deal with the mad cow thing. All right? And uh, I did find out, Bill, a practical way to know if your cow has mad cow disease. Okay? Now listen. As strange as this is, you got my permission. That's right, Pastor Billy. Mark this date down. If your cow does what I'm about to show you, put it down. Walk away. It's got mad cow disease. Let's take a look. Moo! 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 Okay, just walk away from it. That's all you got to do, John. So that, that's, that's my test that I do. So anyway, but that's right. I know you guys are thinking, do you really think chicken's going to get off scot-free? Oh, no, contraire. Uh, that's right. For those of you hooked on bad French. Uh, no, I don't think so. Folks, as we all can see with this picture, once again, it is evil. Uh, you think the avian bird flu thing is bad? Ain't nothing compared to that, folks. Uh, we all know that cows have naturally occurring horns. That, I'm sorry, is not natural. That's supernatural. That's evil. Just stay away from it. But here's the whole point. Seriously, okay. Had your little left there. Uh, with all these global, here, I'm telling you, I really think it's an agenda. With all these global food fears, like the mad cow disease and the E. coli and stuff, I'm not saying there's an element of truth to them, but they're using these as a platform to get you and I to react to this crisis with a uh, manufactured outcry. It's being used to get us to cry out what they want us to cry out for. So that we will literally not just want, we will cry out, we will want to all of a sudden, tell me this isn't the attitude today, we want to demand, we demand right now, what is in our food supply at all times, wherever it came from, all the way from the farm to the fork. <gasps> Where have I heard that before? We've been corralled to cry out for the very system that they're creating, okay? And, and of course, they appear on the scene. Well, hey, as if they just pulled it out of their pocket. Hey, we got this stuff called RFID. And, and Bill, if you let us track every single item on the planet, <laughs> we'll all be safe. Crisis over. Okay, folks, I'm telling you. And they're already uh, uh, putting out the promotional pieces, getting you and I used to thinking it's awesome having every item tagged and tracked. Okay, let's take a look at this one. Well, well. Could I have three of these steaks, please? Three sirloin? Yeah. Certainly you can. Three steaks coming up. What's food print? Food print? Well, to cut a long story short, it means that you can now find out exactly where your beef came from. And all the information that's contained in your number, your unique food print number, is on the sticker. So if I buy pre-packed pork from the chill cabinet, I know it's fully traceable. And now if I buy beef over the counter from the butcher, you can trace it back too. Exactly. So not only do you get all the usual information on weight, price, date and so on, from now on you'll be able to find out where it came from too. With food print you're 100% assured of its traceability. For customers like yourself, it's another guarantee of super value quality. Enjoy that. I have a feeling I will. Foodprint is the start of a massive and unique fresh food traceability system. It is an excellent incentive and well worth alerting customers to. Yeah, I'll alert you too to something, folks. <laughs> I 
think it's the beginning of the mark of the beast system that's going to track every single food item on the planet. And listen, don't get me wrong. I, 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 how many guys love having a non-E. coli hamburger? Yeah, yeah woohoo, yeah. Right? And uh, I, I'm not against, uh, you know, making sure our food supply is good. But I'm telling you folks, that's all being used as a platform to get to where they want us to go. Okay? And, and that's how they get us into it. They, 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 what they're not telling you folks is in order to pull off stage two of this farm to the fork thing, this vision of our food supply, is right now... This food print, the food labeling, even being able to track this item all the way from the farm to the farm. It, it, it started out voluntarily. But see, what they're not telling you is it's becoming mandatory. Get everybody used to it first. And then whether those resistors, too bad. It's now mandatory. Okay, and, and that's what they're doing is they're being able to monitor all of our food at all times. Now, the program, please check this out yourself. I'm not making this up. It's called NAIS, N-A-I-S. That's the National Animal Identification System. The National Animal Identification System. And it states, quote, every single livestock animal in the United States will be identified, tagged, tracked, logged, and reported to the government. And they're using RFID technology, okay? And it started as a guise. How did this even make it through there? Well, guess what? All these food scare crises, we've got to have the government fix it for us, right? And that's what they used as a platform. Now listen, here's the problem. All animals, guys, means all animals. It isn't just the big corporate factory farms that is a big concern. No, it's every single animal. Listen, that includes the half dozen chickens at grandma's house. Well, believe it or not, listen, her premises and each chicken must be tagged and tracked and registered with the government as the program stands. And it's all animals. That means the pet parakeet in a cage on the 20th floor of a condo in Miami Beach must also be registered and along with the premises and there are no exceptions. Every small independent farmer, every pet owner, all homesteaders, everyone will have to tag and track every single animal they have and there are no exceptions. Boy, we've been schnookered. And if you don't think that the ultimate goal is to get the whole food supplied, listen, this is their own stated goal uh, in the RFID industry to have 900 billion, not million, 900 billion food items, 824 million livestock, all tagged, all tracked, all monitored with RFID by 2015. We're, are, we're kind of distracted, aren't we? Maybe we should have studied Bible prophecy 10 years ago so this wouldn't be such a big surprise. But nobody wants to talk about it. Nobody wants to teach it. And it's like catching everybody off guard. And tell me that's not a logical plan. It is a plan. It's a spiritual warfare plan. I'm fully convinced again. Now, listen, that's not done. I really believe. Let's take it to the next, next level. Why are they pushing this then? Why are they so hung up on the animals? I mean, I see through their excuse. I think it's a bunch of baloney. Okay, but why are you going to do it? Well, again, I don't think you understand the big plan, the ultimate plan, until once again you get back to Bible prophecy. You see, I think this is a stage one of an even bigger plan that they're going to implement very soon that the Bible talks about. Once again, put yourself back in the Antichrist shoes. I mean, here you have, according to the Bible, you have the ultimate goal of tracking and tagging every single person on the planet and monitoring everything they do, including what they buy and sell. Now, so how in the world, because this is going to happen, how in the world is this guy going to get people used to the idea of receiving an implant themselves? Well, hey, wouldn't it make it sense to kind of implement a kind of phase one, if you will, and try it out on animals first around the whole planet? I mean, because first, if you get all the animals uh, on the planet tagged and tracked, which is what they're doing, uh, then once people accept that, they get used to that, they get conditioned to that, and then, of course, you mandate it for those who resist. Too bad. Then phase two would kick in the gear. And then people uh, at that level, maybe they would be more willing to be treated like cattle themselves. And get an implant too around the whole world. In fact, maybe you could use another crisis to, to get people to go along with this tagging system for people. Maybe it'll be a, another disease crisis except this time for humans. And in order to ensure the safety of the planet, we all got to get this tracking system so that the de disease doesn't take out the planet. Unless you think, folks, that this is really not their plan. I got an actual interview from Digital Angel, the CEO. His name's Kevin McGrath. Okay, now, now Digital Angel, if you don't realize, it's one of the uh, corporations who not only make this RFID tracking technology for animals, they also make it for people. 
It works on both ends, okay? And you tell me if he not only admits that there, the existence of both phases, first do it to the animals, then work it into people. But you tell me if they're not expecting to do it real soon. Let's take a look at that interview. RFID technology to track everything from pets to humans. We'll have more from the CEO of Digital Angel when Forbes.com Video Network returns. Welcome back, I'm Tara Murphy. Chips that contain RFID technology allow you to track everything from humans to pets to airplanes. Digital Angel is one of the companies that manufactures such chips. Joining me now is Kevin McGrath. Mr. McGrath is the president and CEO of Digital Angel. Kevin, thanks for being here. Sure, it's my pleasure. So why don't you start by telling me how these chips exactly work? Well, it's an RFID chip, and everybody knows about RFID. You use RFID, you think about it with, in terms of Walmart and pallets and boxes moving around. We have uh, developed an expertise for using RFID with animals and humans. So um, we have probably chipped more animals in the world than all the other companies combined. Um, we chip uh, cats and dogs in the United States and Europe and Japan. We chip, believe it or not, salmon in the upper northwest. Uh, we, we chip uh, uh, livestock. We put, put uh, RFID chips into ear tags that go inside of livestock. In fact, we're the second largest livestock tagging company in the United States, and we're the oldest livestock tagging company in the United States. The applications are numerous. So we see so many great uses of RFID technology. When do you think we're going to start to see a greater penetration? Well, um, on a number of different fronts. First of all, on the uh, companion pet front, we're, we do a million, uh, we chip a million pets a year in the United States and two million uh, uh, pets a year in Europe. So that's, that's big. It's going to get much bigger. Um, with regard to uh, livestock, uh, people have heard about the National ID program, the mad cow scare, and making certain all the, the uh, animals, all the livestock are tagged. I would guess you will start to see major uh, increases in the amount of RFID tagging. Our business has tripled in that arena, but it can go up by a factor of 10. With regard to humans, humans is, a, is the area that is moving the slowest in many respects simply because it's the area, the, obviously, from a privacy perspective, we all have the most concerns about. Mm -hmm. But right now, as we speak, we're in clinical implementation in nine hospitals in the Northeast Corridor. Our goal is 25 hospitals by the end of the year. Our goal is every single major trauma center in the United States. Whoa. Every single major trauma center in the United States, your goal is to have RFID implant technology ready to go. Wow. Is anybody excited that our government recently just took over our health care system? and made it mandatory for us to have to have. But I'm sure they'll never make it mandatory for us to get one of these RFID implants. I'll let you... Why then is this guy wanting to put this in all the hospitals? Anybody start to see start, something coming together here a little bit? But that's right, you guys uh, just, you don't, you don't respond very well to the media. Because that's, you, you need to understand there's nothing to be concerned about here. This is all for your good. They're here for us, don't you realize? I mean, just in case, folks, you've got to realize how close we are. Uh, just in case you, you want to freak out on this, uh, once again, to qualm our fears, Hollywood and the media is right there trying to encourage us to get us to go along with this Mark of the Beast system. I mean, come on, folks. It's nothing to be afraid of. Everybody's doing it. In fact, even ABC News admits, come on, it's going to be awesome once you, the person, take the chip. Let's take a look at that broadcast. Finally from us this evening, technology on the cutting edge. We were interested today to hear that more than 100 law enforcement officials in Mexico are having microchips implanted in their arms. The chips allow a person to be scanned, sort of like a cereal box at the supermarket checkout. In Mexico, this will be one more tool in the fight against crime. Here's ABC's John McKenzie. You've seen it before, right out of Hollywood. It's maybe a little uncomfortable. A microchip inside the body. A hidden high-tech identification tag. They're yeah, the access codes to your job spot. Now Mexico's attorney general and 160 of his deputies have had microchips implanted in their arms to control access to the country's new criminal investigation center. It is to provide access, said the attorney general, to the right people in exclusive areas where there is valuable, sensitive information. The microchip, the size of a grain of rice, is injected under the skin and gives off a low-frequency radio wave. 
A scanner reads each chip's identification number to verify an official's security clearance. The chip developed by Applied Digital Solutions is similar to those used in the U.S. to identify and return runaway dogs. In humans, it can have several uses. Little stick. The chips can also be programmed to carry medical information. The one in this patient details his blood type, allergies, and the fact he has Alzheimer's disease. Some researchers are developing microchips for use in the home so that wearing one can turn on lights and open doors, hands-free. The next step, say researchers, is developing an implantable chip with a global positioning system to track people miles away, whether kidnapped or lost, just as cars can now be traced. A kind of lojack for the body. Oh, what? A lojack for the body. In other words, wouldn't this be great, guys, if we just go along this? Listen to these guys at ABC News. We, we can be tracked. We can be tagged just like an animal anywhere on the whole planet. What is it going to take to get our attention? What more does God going to do, guys? This is real. I, hello? I, I don't think it's much of a stretch to realize and conclude this is the beginning of the full implementation of the Mark of the Beast technology. It's just happening now. Not 50 years. It's happening now. We've got the economy there. We've got the currency there. We've got the technology to put it all together. It's happening now. And this is why, once again, I firmly believe out of love, God is giving us this information now so we won't be caught off guard. That means the seven year tribulation is at hand, which means the return of Jesus Christ is even closer than that. Which begins at the beginning point with the rapture of the church. Jesus said when you see these things begin to take place. When you see advertisements on ABC News encouraging us, hey, get the mark of the beast. You better stand up. You better lift up your heads because your redemption is drawing near. That means, guess what? We're all going for a horseback ride. Yay. We should be excited, not freaked out. Are you kidding me? This is what we've been saved for. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is coming back to get us. Okay, that's great news, guys. But again, if you're here and you're not a Christian, what more does God got to do to get your attention? How much more information does he have to give you? <laughs> two, two million plus people outside these four walls, they're not hearing this stuff. But you are. God is being merciful to you today. If you were here and you're not a Christian, what more does God got to do to get your attention? This is really happening. That chip is not only real, it's really coming. In fact, it's already here as you saw you need to repent. You need to get saved now before it's too late. And that's what Jesus says in Revelation chapter 3 verse 3. He warns us this, guys. He says, remember therefore what you have received and heard. Obey it and repent. Are you literally going to walk out of here and ignore everything you just saw? Remember. Jesus says, pay attention to it. Why? Because if you don't wake up, I'm going to come to you like a thief and you're not going to know at what time I'm going to come to you. In other words, surprise! Everybody disappeared, even in a church service. Except for maybe a handful who sat there and even though week after week after week after week you had an opportunity to receive God's gift of a salvation. And he said, no. But now it's too late and you're left behind and you're going to be in that Antichrist kingdom. Don't make that mistake. Respond today. Amen? Let's pray. Well, hi, this is Pastor Billy Crone of Sunrise Baptist Church, and I hope you enjoyed today's study. But before you go, let me ask you one final question. Are you sure that if you were to die today, that you go to heaven and not hell? Before you answer that, let me share a couple things with you. Did you know that the Bible says that God is holy and that we are not? And the Bible also says that the wages of our sin or our unholiness is death. In other words, when we die... And it's coming for each one of us. We're all marching towards the grave at different speeds, but it's going to happen. The Bible says, therefore, since the wages of our sin is death, we deserve to die and go straight to hell and not to heaven. And that's bad enough, but to make matters worse, we don't want to admit this. God already knows. He knows uh, all of our behavior, everything, our thoughts, what we've done, what even we're going to do. He knows it all. He's gone. Even though he already knows this, we don't want to admit this. And so, out of love and mercy, God gave us something called His law, or the Ten Commandments. It's kind of like His x-ray into our heart to show us what He already knows, that He is holy and that we are not. And it's this unholiness or sin that separates us from Him. 
let's take a look at God's x-ray, if you will, his divine law to show us what he already knows. The Ten Commandments, uh, the ninth one says this, you shall not bear false witness. Okay, that's called lying. Okay, and if you've ever told a lie once, which we all have, myself included, the Bible says that makes you a liar. Okay, the, the, another commandment says you shall not steal. Okay, uh, and you might think, well, that's something that everybody does. Well, it doesn't make it right, and it demonstrates what God is trying to show us, that uh, we all have sin, and it's separating us from him. Even if you took a pencil in the third grade from somebody, if you did it without permission, that's stealing. And so now you've become a thief. The Bible says that you shall not use the Lord's name in vain. And how interesting it is and unfortunate that the only name under heaven by which men might be saved, the name Jesus Christ, has now become a common cuss word. The Bible says that God is so holy that even his name is holy. If you've taken the Lord's name in vain and used it as a cuss word or even flippantly, the Bible calls that the sin of blasphemy. And so now you become a blasphemer. The Bible says you shall not commit adultery. And Jesus says if you even look at another person with lust in your eye, you've committed adultery in your heart. And finally, the Bible says uh, you shall not murder. And you might think, well, hey, I haven't done that one. Really? Well, again, the Bible says that the sin of hatred is the same as the sin of murder. The only difference is you pulled the trigger, if you will, in your heart. You wish they were dead. And in God's eyes, it's the same thing in principle. Folks, that's only just a couple of the Ten Commandments. We didn't even go through all of them. But I think you're starting to get the picture. The Bible is correct. We have all fallen short of the glory of God, myself included. And that we are separated from God as a result. And so when our time comes, we're not automatically going to heaven. We are headed for judgment. We are headed for hell. Now let me tell you the good news. The good news is that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to save us. Jesus Christ died on the cross. It was the death penalty of its day. He paid in full uh, the price for our sins to be forgiven. Let me give you an analogy. For instance, even today, we could see that a person could commit a crime. Uh, they, they cannot reverse it. The, the sentence has been passed. The judge has uh, slammed his gavel, and they are ushered off into their jail cell. And in this particular crime, they are going to receive the death penalty. And so they're behind bars just waiting for the time, waiting for the call for them to go and uh, receive the death penalty. But believe it or not, as we know, there is a way that a person can get off a of death row. And that is if the one in authority, the governor, would grant them a pardon. Now, they didn't earn it. Uh, they certainly don't deserve it. And there's nothing they could do uh, to earn it because nothing can reverse their crime. Okay? Yet the one in authority has that ability to grant them a pardon. Well, can I tell you something? That's what God has done through Jesus Christ. The cross was the death penalty of the day. God sent his one and only son to die on the cross, to take the death penalty in our place, and that if we would just receive his pardon for all of our sins, God is willing to allow us to get off a of death row. He's willing to forgive us completely of all of our sins. That's the good news that I want to share with you. God loves you. The Bible says that God is not willing that anyone should perish, but everyone come to repentance. Won't you, if that's you, call upon the name of Jesus Christ right now? Won't you ask him to forgive you of your sins? The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Won't you do that now, wherever you are? Please, take God up on his amazing, loving offer. I'll let you down. Man will let you down. People will let you down. But God never will. He wants to adopt you into his forever family. He loves you. He's willing to forgive you of anything and everything you've ever done, past, present, and future. It's amazing. Please, call upon Jesus now. Well, this has been Pastor Billy Crone of Sunrise Baptist Church. If there's anything that we can do for you, please don't hesitate to ask. Our number and information will come up here on the screen here shortly. And remember, I hope to see you in heaven. God bless. 
Thank you for watching this presentation from Sunrise Baptist Church. If you would like to send us a letter or any other kind of postage, you can reach us at 1780 Betty Lane, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89156. For more information, you can give us a call at 702-452-8599 or email us at bcrone at getalifemedia.com or you can visit our website at www.getalifemedia.com. Billy Crone and this ministry can also be found on Facebook and Twitter. Join us for services at www.sunriselv.com.